Dots. I'm Dr. Latif and I'm the host of the Money Fit MD podcast. This is where we help badass women physicians just like you learn simple and effective tools to build wealth from the inside out. That way we can create wealth and bigger impact without all the burnout. Enjoy the episode. As women physicians, many times we experience burnout at work. We get really frustrated about things that are not going the way that we want. We get frustrated that we're not getting the requests that we want. We wonder why we're not paid better than we're paid. We wonder why we're not getting the staff that we should have gotten. We wonder why someone else gets more admin time than we do. And we keep all that bottled inside and it frustrates the crap out of us. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the reasons why we burn out. We wish that someone could do something about it, but are we actually communicating it? Well, if you've ever wondered, or if any of what I just said just sounds interesting to you, then you definitely want to listen to this episode. Welcome guys. I'm Dr. Latifat. I am a physician and a money and wealth coach for women physicians, which means that I help women physicians take control of their money and also do it their rich life. We do that through the money school for women physicians. We do that through this podcast and also through a five day MD money move challenge that we do, which is the perfect setup for women physicians that want to create amazing moves and go from being stuck in their finances and in ways that they can earn. And you can find the information for this by going to our website, which is the moneyfeedmd.com. Welcome. If you're meeting us for the first time, I'm glad you met me. I'm so glad you're in my world. Whoever shared this link to you, however, where you found us, just thank the Lord for them. (laughs) All right, I'm just joking. Well, maybe you should actually thank the Lord for them. But anyways, I have an amazing episode for you guys today. This is something that I, everything that I talk about on my podcast are things that I know are key tools to helping you create the rich life that you want. Unfortunately, many of this is not talked about, especially in a lot of finance space. And you wonder why we are, don't have the amount of money that we want. And you also wonder why we sometimes have the money, but we don't have the richness that we want. I want you to have both. I want you to have the money and I want you to feel rich. If you're with me, say yes, girl. (laughs) I should have a disclaimer on this podcast that I'm a touch of whack, but that's okay. We're all a work in progress. God is working on me. He's working on you too. (laughs) So guys, I think our culture and our world has done a really, really horrible job of teaching us about many things that are important. And as I'm getting more knowledgeable, as I'm getting wiser, yes, I'm getting wiser. And I don't think wisdom comes with age. I think wisdom comes by learning and making sure that you're understanding. Wisdom comes by applied understanding and knowledge. As I'm getting intentionally wiser because of how I'm spending my time, my attention, my energy, my money, I'm realizing how much of a disservice that we've been done. And so part of what I'm doing on this episode is to help you unlearn and learn so that you can actually have what you want without thinking you have to wait until you're 65 plus in order to enjoy the freedom of life. Today's episode is something that is made something that I've I've been doing that has made a huge difference in my life. And this is something that I learned from one of my mentor, one of my coaches, um, Myron Golden. And he's a huge proponent of like being careful about the words that we use. And I really think that that is true. And so today on this episode, I want to talk to us about how our words can build wealth and how our words can actually decrease our ability to build wealth. And if you've been in my world, you know that I'm a Christian. I don't need you to be a Christian, but the source of my own life, the source of a lot of things that has added value to my life is based on the word of God. So if I'm not sharing that with you all, I'm really doing you a disservice and I'm not being honest about my source. Doesn't mean I want you to believe what I believe, but I'm telling you what I believe and you get to do whatever you want to believe. And I'm going to share the scripture with you guys um, that is so fundamentally important when it comes to what I'm sharing with you guys today. And it's the the scripture that says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And the word they were talking about is Jesus. You know, the according to the Bible, according to Christian faith, 
you know, with Jesus, um, we talk about the God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. And we talk about Jesus has been the son of God that was sent to the earth to save our sins and help us really redeem our ourselves from the stuff that we as humans have done. And one of the scriptures that, that aligns with that is says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And when I hear that scripture, one of the things that I think about is how important words are like your words can become flesh and become your reality like that. Imagine that. And again, regardless of what your faith is or lack of everybody has a faith, whether you ascribe to a religion or not, but imagine our words becoming flesh, becoming alive. So imagine the words that you speak being intentional about your words so that your words can come into existence. And if there are things in your life that you don't want, how to change the source of your words so that your words don't become flesh, right? And I think part of it is our culture has taught us that it's just words. Like we just say words, we just, you know, like throw a bunch of curse words and, you know, if you use curse words, whatever, but like just use your words like it doesn't matter. Like say I'm going to show up and not show up, say I will do it and not do it. And I'm not talking about perfectionism here. I'm just talking about improving and getting better, right? Being more in integrity, like actually knowing that our words have value. And one of the things that I talk to women physicians and teach about is the fact that many times we think things in our head, but we don't say it out. Our words do not actually come out. And the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But many times we don't actually say the things that we want to say. We are hoping that someone else is reading our minds. You're like, they should know that she, they should not be paying me less. They should know that it's not humane to see patients in 10 minutes. They should know that I should not have to like work additional hour because I ate lunch and went to go poop, right? And I've seen all kinds of ridiculous stuff that and some employers, not all employers, but some employers pull crap that really should should be is illegal, should be <laughs> really they are illegal and should be enforced as illegal. And some of them should should be sued and maybe end up in jail. Yeah, I said what I said. I did say what I said. And I believe that if your employer is abusing you, they should be sued, in my opinion. Even. Yes, they should be sued. And if you are the employer that's abusing yourself. It's time to sue yourself, like sue your LLC <laughs> for not giving you time to rest because you deserve better. You're human, right? And you deserve to rest and refuel. Um, but anyways, understanding that if things are not going the way that you want and you do not use your words to communicate efficiently, effectively, and with kindness, you can see how you are also becoming part of the problem. So, for example, if your medical assistant is not checking in people in efficiently, it's time to communicate effectively with them. Um, if your employer is not paying you what it should be paying you, even though I hear you, they should know they should be fair, but life is not fair. Being able to use your words to effectively negotiate and say, no, that's not what I think my value, not your worth, no one can pay your worth, but the value that I know that I'm trained to do and the value that I'm committing and giving you my word to produce, that is not what I should be getting paid. This is what I should be getting paid. Your patients or your clients that are not paying what they should be paying you, we know, I love you. Insurance companies suck right now. We have to change the model that we're serving in and we would try, but this is the only way to keep our own lights on, like using our words to communicate, but we don't have conversations. Like literally I found that Patients think that doctors are sitting down like sipping pina colada sometimes and, and just like waiting to torture them in the waiting room. And yes, there are things that we could do better. I'm not saying we should not improve. There are things we can do better. But using our words to communicate and explain and tell the truth can be so helpful to the other person. So I want us to challenge ourselves to use our words better, to use our words differently, right? And... Part of it is I want to share like two or three points here. And I know I already shared some points, but I want to make sure that you don't miss the points that I'm saying is number one is that your words can reflect what you believe. And that's not a reason to shut your mouth. <laughs> that's a reason. Well, that's not a reason to shut your mouth permanently. That's a reason to evaluate and think about what you're thinking about so that if you need to change what you're thinking about, what you believe then your words can become different, right? Because again, out of the abundance of the heart, you want to call it the mind, the, the mouth speaks. So if, if what you're saying, if you would not want to see what you're saying, 
become flesh, then it's time to go and like uncover what you believe and change the beliefs that you have so that your words can now change. And then what you can create cannot change because if your word becomes flesh, you want it to be something that actually makes sense to what you want to create. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is understanding that your words are tools of communication. Your words are tools that can help you um, persuade and make other people mobilize. Like when I think about people that have made a huge difference in our lives, you know, we can talk about people like Martin Luther King Jr. and how he used his words to move not just the people of that generation, but we still continue to be moved by today, right? When I'm reading the Bible, you know, there's an area where you can see the different colors of text of the words that Jesus said and how the words that were said generations and generations and thousands and thousands of years ago still are effective words that move us till today. You can think about anybody else. Like, I mean, I'm on this podcast right now. I'm using my words to help women physicians create better lives, create better um, richness in their life, move them to become the CEO of their finances, move them to live a life of impact, to not burn out, to not grind to death, right? Those are words. So if I want to be better, I have to make sure I'm using my words more effectively and challenging myself to see what do I believe and is what I believe what I want to believe or is it time for me to change what I believe? And the same applies to you. Like what are your beliefs about the value that you give? What are your beliefs about your time? Do you believe that you can cut down at work? Like soon, sooner than you think? Do you believe that you can learn how to invest? Do you believe that you can become the CEO of your finances? Do you believe that you can travel? Do you believe you can take a clinical pause? Do you believe that you can take a sabbatical? Do you believe that you can diversify your income sources, that you don't have to burn out in medicine? Do you believe that your patients care about you enough that if you told them that you were unwell, some of them would understand and some that don't understand can go find themselves a different doctor, right? Do you believe, like, what do you believe? Because what you believe is going to show up in your words. That's integrity. And if your words become life, What's that going to look like? Like, for example, one of my goals is I believe that women physicians are a powerful source, powerful force. I believe that we are part of the solution in healthcare. I don't believe we're a liability. I believe that we're an asset. I believe that every woman physician has the capacity to do money, no money, grow money, create the rich life that she wants. Every woman physician has the capacity to be a badass at making money. Every woman physician has the capacity to have seven figures, not in their 50s or 60s, but even in their 40s and 30s. I believe that strongly. And I'm grateful that I've been part of many women physicians creating that as their reality. I believe that I can give value. I believe that I can speak. I believe that you can do whatever you want to do. It's your life. I believe that every one of us should not have to wait till we're 65 to have the freedom of time and life. I believe that we can create that now. And I believe that the things that we do here on our pot platform, on the podcast, in the Money Moves Challenge, in, in the Money Community, the Money School for Women Physicians, in our free Facebook group, the Financial Liberation Plan Movement for Women Physicians, I believe those are all parts of that. I believe those. And because of that, I speak those. And because I speak those, it comes into action, right? I, the words that I use, the action that follows the words now become my reality. If I don't believe that, then I need to go audit my thoughts and say, why do I not believe that? Why do I believe that I cannot help people? Why do I believe that your life is not valuable? Why do I believe that because your primary care physician does not mean you cannot create seven figures of net worth sooner than later? Why do I believe that? Right. And the thing is this, what we feed ourselves in our ears is not going to affect what we think about. So that's why like, I am very, very intentional about what I feed my mind because my mind is the source of my life. And so if I'm not being careful about what I feed my mind, my life is not going to look the way that I want it. And I'm, I have to be accountable to God about how I spent my life. And I don't say that in a grindy way because I believe that God wants me to rest. God wants me to play. God wants me to have fun. The first miracle Jesus did was he turned water into wine. God wants me to party. I'm just joking. Well, God wants me to have fun, not get, you know, like wasted, but God wants me to enjoy life and relationships and serve people. And part of my work on this earth is to serve women physicians. That's why I'm here. Right. So all that to say is if you actually spent a week being more intentional about your words, if you started to see that your words literally can be used as, you know, how we have like CSF fluid around our 
you know, our spine, our brain, and all that. Imagine if your words were that, and you could actually pour over yourself with words. If you can believe that you're beautifully and wonderfully made, if you believe that this is not as good as it gets, like you have everything that you need and it's available, you just have to say yes, find it, access it. Yes, you may have to pay to access it, but even that you can get a return on your investment. Like if you started to audit what you believe, if you started to edit your words, if you started to see your words as fluid that washes your mind and can literally become what you be the key to becoming what you are going to create in six months, in one year, in two years, in three years, what would you change? Would you say words like, I am worthless, I am stupid, I am not smart, see, I'm a failure, I am never going to be able to grow my money, it doesn't matter how hard I try, it's never going to succeed. If those words became flesh, what would you create? So this episode is to remind you that your words are not just words. Your words have power, they have energy behind it. And if you don't want to see what you're saying, then don't say what you're saying. It's time for an audit. I hope this episode has been helpful for you. Sorry if it was more of a, not a full event, um, but whatever it is, I hope you got something out of it and I hope you incorporate something out of it so that you can create something different out of it. I love you so much. I'm rooting for you. If I can be of service, go to moneyfitmd.com, go schedule, join us inside of our money challenge. It's literally, it's like $97 for, um, you know, for general admission, 297 for VIP. And you'll see some of the clips on the website about what women physicians have been able to create. It is amazing what you can do in five days. And for those that are joining us inside of our money school, now imagine what you could do in 12 months. Let's pull some shit up together. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much. Um, thank you for being in my world. And remember to share this episode with at least three women physicians that you want to live wealthy and create the richness in life so that we can all be free together because life is just so much more fun when you and I are free. I love you. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for being a part of my world. Goodbye.